One night to go. Before the game, live our lives. I can't eat. I can't sleep. It's the SEC championship. I'm a Louisiana man who grew up dreaming of being a tiger. I waited so long for this chance, and then it almost slipped away. But I'm back and ready to play for the Bulldog Nation. Our season almost ended before it really began. Touchdown, Tennessee! Instant victory in overtime in Baton Rouge. But we are Tigers. We have heart and we have character. And here we are. This title is not just for us. But our fans, our state. We've been through so much. We lost to the Tigers two years ago. We want it back. Redemption. Salvation. Purpose. Passion. It's the SEC Championship. Emotion is high. How do you sleep the night before the game? Dome in Atlanta, the SEC Championship. This week's dog walk takes place 85 miles from the campus. DJ Shockley gets the start for the Bulldogs. LSU is the home team in this one. Only 525 miles to the east of downtown Baton Rouge. It's the 2005 SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. Out of the east, the Bulldogs of Georgia, 9 and 2. Out of the west, the Tigers of Louisiana State University, 10 and 1. The Tigers of LSU. Head coach Les Miles. The Bulldogs and the Dog Walk rank and file. coach is Mark Rick and I'm Vern Lundquist. Good evening everybody. Welcome to the Georgia Dome along with Todd Blackledge and Tracy Wolfson. This is a game with two teams whose presence here is richly deserved. LSU in this event for the third time in the last five years. They're only four points away from a perfect record this season. Georgia in this event for the first time or third time in the last four years themselves only seven points away from an unblemished mark in 2005. The Bulldogs and the Tigers represent sustained excellence. These two teams have posted the best records in the SEC since the turn of the century. Todd, it promises to be close. What are the keys? I think there's three things this game comes down to, Vern. Number one, with two great defenses in the ball game, field position and the play of your special teams becomes very significant. Number two, turnovers. These two teams statistically are very similar except for one category. Turnover margin has been a big key to Georgia's success. And even though LSU's won 10 games, at times they've been careless with the football. And thirdly and most importantly, I think this game will come down to the play of the two quarterbacks. Both Georgia's DJ Shockley and LSU's Jamarcus Russell have been outstanding in their first year as a true starter. Tonight, the question will be who can show the most patience and poise, and when the opportunity presents it, which one of these two guys will step up and make the big plays? Georgia Dome is packed to the Raptors. It'll be the Bulldogs and the Tigers with a kick coming up. Tigers of LSU won the toss. They've deferred the option to the second half. 
That means LSU will kick off. Georgia will get the ball to start. Only the uh, 26th meeting between these two. They've split the last four, and they met here two years ago. LSU convincing winners in that one. Ramarcus Brown is a deep man as Chris Jackson gets set to kick off. Tyson Browning broke his leg in the next to last game, and here is Ramarcus Brown, number 11, his first kickoff return of the season. He's three yards in, and he will bring it out a long way. And he has popped, and the ball is loose. And I believe, no, no, Georgia recovers. <laughs> and an LSU player is down at the 10-yard line. Well, why not get off to a bang in the SEC championship? Goodness. That is Karan Gordon, number 24. Backup safety. LSU, the best in the conference at covering kicks, but Ramarcus Brown with a nice head of steam coming out of his own end zone, and right away the ball knocked loose. We talked about turnovers being an important part of this game. Georgia almost turned it over on the first play of the game. Daniel Francis, the guy who put the hit on Ramarcus Brown, and Brown able to come up with his own fumble. Karan Gordon is the injured player. He has been, uh, as you can tell, turned over onto his back. Medical staff out there. We talked about special teams, field position, and turnovers being important, and we saw it all right there in the first play. I mean, kick coverage, kick returns, and protecting the football with two great defenses. Very, very important in tonight's ball game. Here's Ramarcus Brown, the redshirt freshman out of East Point, Georgia. Karan Gordon got hit by his own guy. He overran Ramarcus Brown and kind of got leg whipped by his own guy on that play. Jason Spadoni, number 33, had the best shot at the ball. And Ramarcus Brown trying to explain now on the sidelines exactly how he got popped. And as Karan Gordon is assisted to the sidelines, here is D.J. Shockley, fifth-year senior who waited behind David Green for a chance to start for Georgia, and he has had an exemplary season. Yeah, he really has. I mean, he on the field, in the huddle, on the sidelines, as a player and as a leader, he's been outstanding. Missed one game. That was against Florida. One of the two games Georgia lost this year. Out with a knee, he still wears a brace. Leonard Pope, the tight end, starts to the left. Hand off. It's Thomas Brown, number 20. There is a triumvirate of tailbacks used by Georgia. It'll be Brown, Danny Ware, and Greg Lumpkin. And Thomas Brown gets the handoff for the first uh, offensive series. Up front, Inman Jones Schnetzer starting his fourth straight. The best is Max Gene Gillis. Brown and Sutherland in the backfield. The wideouts, Bailey and McClendon and Leonard Pope. The Bulldogs starting lineup presented by Dr. Pepper. Mark Rick, fifth year, second and four Bulldogs. They toss to Brown. Sweep right, pursued and drive. <laughs> Claude wow, Roten. Claude Roten. <laughs> I was talking to Mike Bobo, the quarterback coach, before the game, and he said, I don't know how we're going to block 95 and 98. He said 95 is tough and he plays hard, but 98 may be the quickest guy that I've ever seen. Watch how quick he is off the ball, on the snap, rips through the block of the tackle, Daniel Inman, and then chases down Thomas Brown behind the line of scrimmage. Georgia in its last two games has fared poorly on third downs. Four of 25. They've got a third and eight here. Shockley changes the play. Five seconds to go in the play clock. LSU brings only four. And that pass incomplete at the 40-yard line. It will be fourth down. The little contact there. No call as you hear the, the crowd. Leron Landry tangled up in there with Sean Bailey. And here comes the first special teams mm -hmm. test. Second, actually. Second. That's Kickoff. Right. That's right. I don't want to forget that. But Skyler Green is deep to return the punt. He has returned one as a sophomore, two as a junior, one this year. He's second, however, in the conference to Thomas Flowers of Georgia. And Gordon Ely Kelso will punt it away. The problem is, if you're not used to directional punting, you don't want to change one week before a game. So they'll probably kick to Skyler Green early. This one. 
takes a Georgia roll and Green backs away. It's going to look very effective at the end of a substantial roll for Gordon Ely Kelso. That's a 51 yard punt. Obviously, nothing on the return. Two great returners. Very important for both Skyler Green and Thomas Flowers, neither one of them to try to force the issue. If they get a chance to return it, take your opportunity, but don't force it and make a bad mistake. And the sophomore, Jamarcus Russell, out of Mobile, Alabama. He's had a brilliant season as well, growing every game, and he is huge. Yeah. I mean, I was a big quarterback, but he is off the charts huh. as far as big quarterbacks. 6'6", 260. First down, Georgia brings only four. Play fake, Russell chased, got away. No, he did not get away. Will Thompson, the sixth year defensive end. LSU was trying to go deep on the first play of the game. They were sending all three wide receivers deep down the field. Will Thompson able to beat Brian Johnson, the right tackle, and get a sack. Quentin Moses has been the guy getting most of the sacks this year, but it was the other end, Will Thompson, the senior, with the first sack of the night for Georgia. A loss of 14 for Thompson, his fourth sack of the season. Had a redshirt season and then got a medical redshirt. That's why he is in his sixth year. And it is second and 24. They clocks down. I don't think Jamarcus even knows it. And there's a five more yards backwards. Tony Taylor, number 43, the middle linebacker, exhibiting a little exuberance. Why not? He's back in the lineup. Dead ball, play game, offense. Notice half the distance to go, still second down. Rocky Good is the uh, referee tonight. Here's the LSU Tiger offense. Whitworth, McGill, Nicewanger, Livings, and Brian Johnson. Vincent, the running back. Stelts, Brazel, Bo, and David Jones represent the others. Justin Vincent is in the end zone. The only running back. Motion right side. And I think this is going to go against LSU as well. well. Will Thompson moved, but so did David Jones. The tight end lined up over him. And the question will be, who moved first? There was a lot of movement up there and a little indecision it looked like by LSU before the play started. Here's Will Thompson. He got the sack. He's going to move. And I think Brian Johnson moved after Will Thompson moved. Yeah, I think right? so too. Dead ball. All sides. Defense. Penalties five yards. Previous spot. Still second down. Defensively for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Thompson, who got the sack, Kedrick Golston, Gerald Anderson, and Quentin Moses, who was the sack leader. Mentioned Tony Taylor. He's missed four games this year with injuries. He's back tonight. And the secondary, Minter, Blue, Battle, and Jennings. And that's huge having Tony Taylor back because not only is he their best middle linebacker, but Jarvis Jackson, he's better suited on the outside with his speed than he is in the middle. Russell back. Looks deep, goes deep, and he's got early set down there, and the ball is tipped away. The perfect ball hung timing. up a little bit. It hung up a little bit, but it was perfectly played by Demario Minter because he was beat, but he knew he could still make a play on the football. Demario Minter, who's the best cover corner on this team, is beat right now. And you're right, the ball hung a little bit, but Minter never took his eyes off the football, and that enabled him to get his hand in there and knock it away. Demario Minter. Yeah, he played great last week against Calvin Johnson of Georgia Tech, one of the best wide receivers in the country. So coming into this game should be loaded with confidence. Minter helped Calvin Johnson, held him rather, to two catches in that 14-7 win over Georgia Tech. Johnson named to a first-team All-American spot this week. Third and 23. Keep it conservative, hand it off. Nothing there. Kedrick Golston, LSU will punt. And that brings on the punt return specialist, Thomas Flowers. Well, Thomas Flowers has had an outstanding season. He returned this one for a touchdown against Tennessee, really broke the game open up in Knoxville. Last week, set up the winning touchdown with a 33-yard return. And again, field position right now should be in favor of Georgia after this exchange. Chris Jackson, the junior punter, is back. Hang time, very important here. This one is not high. Flowers from the 48. Good downfield coverage. Outstanding. 
for LSU. So what appeared to be a marvelous opportunity for the return results instead for a return of nine feet. Nevertheless, good field position for the guys who marched on a moment ago. Georgia's got it for the second time. They face an LSU defense that is ranked number four in the country. Melvin Oliver, Quad Roten, Kyle Williams, and Chase Pittman. The two tackles are outstanding. Hollis Vaughn and Allie Highsmith are the linebackers. And in the secondary, uh, Jesse Daniels is not starting. Number 31, injured ankle. He's given way to Craig Stelts. And that's a big deal because Daniels, a three-year starter, one of the real strengths of this defense are the two tackles and the two safeties. Stelts has played a lot in nickel situations, but has not been an every-down player for this defense. And Craig Lumpkin is on the uh, offensive backfield now. Here's a play fake. Shockley going deep. He's got a man open. Way downfield. Caught. Mohamed Nassikor. The freshman from Charlotte. No. It's Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey instead of Nassikor. Shockley, Bailey, touchdown, Georgia. Outstanding protection up front off the play action. And Shockley shows the strength of his arm. Brandon Catu hammers it home. Sean Bailey's third touchdown of the season. Sean Bailey is going to beat Chevis Jackson, but the safety, Craig Stelts, is late getting over. We just mentioned the new safety. He's not able to get over in time to help the corner, and D.J. Shockley took advantage of it right away. It started with protection. It ended with a big touchdown for Georgia. Well, that touchdown by Georgia seems like the perfect play for our playbook presented by the Hartford. Two guys that are going to get victimized in the LSU defense. The corner, Jackson, the safety, Stelts. Now watch as this play develops. When Bailey goes with a little inside fake, the corner is going to look in at the quarterback just barely, and the safety's not going to get over deep enough. He paused, Bailey ran by the corner, and Stelts, the safety, just not able to get over in time. Again, Craig Stelts didn't know he was going to start until after pregame warm-ups. And he was not able to help his corner on this play. And it, again, it started before this play. You know, there was the sack. There was another loss of yardage. There was the punt change. And then all of a sudden, first down, they go play action. Bo Pelini on the right, the defensive coordinator. First touchdown LSU has given up in the first quarter since October 1st against Mississippi State. D.J. Shockley finds Sean Bailey. Mm. 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 Folks, that means that was a significant play. If we get a triple, boom. That was important. This is a short kick. Skyler Green at the 12. Near side. Spins and is dropped at the 20. So despite the short kick, not much of a return. It was short, but it was high, and it was close to the sideline. So that really limited where the kickoff return could go. You talk about directional punting. That was a directional kickoff. 10-14 to go opening quarter to Marcus Russell back on second set for the Tigers of Louisiana State. Play fake, Russell rolling right, being chased. Had Will Thompson there, finds early Doucette. Nice play after the 36-yard line. And let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Trace? Thanks, guys. This was just an overtime loss away from being perfect but for them this season has been about more than just football they fought through hurricanes they've overcome adversity and pulled together as a team senior Andrew Whitworth said this season has made him a better person he said all the changes we've gone through remind us of how blessed we are and how we shouldn't take the opportunities for granted he said I'll always remember the way the guys handled the situation and the things that we've done for our community he said I'll never forget the character this team showed Thank you, Tracy. He's lined up at left tackle. Here's the toss. Vincent going right and not very far. Jarvis Jackson 
Well, you know, it was two years ago in the first quarter of this game, a very similar play. It was a toss sweep to the right that that guy right there, Justin Vincent, took 87 yards for a touchdown to set the tempo in, S in the LSU's championship win. That time, Jarvis Jackson shot into the backfield and got Vincent behind the line of scrimmage. Jarvis Vincent had a thousand, uh, Justin Vincent, a thousand years, a thousand yards. I've got my Jacksons and my Vincent and my years and my yards mixed up. Anyway, he was reduced to third team status and they lost Ali Broussard before this season began. Joseph Adai, the starter, hampered by a bruise in his ankle. So Vincent getting a lot of action. Here's Russell, right side, intercepted. That's DeMario Mitter's second interception of his career ever. He had one earlier against Florida. We talk about a quarterback needing to play with great confidence. And when you have confidence, your vision is better. DeMario Minter read Jamarcus Russell the entire way. Here is DeMario Minter. The route is going to go behind him, and DeMario Minter is just going to fall into it. He looks like he's covering the short receiver. That's what Russell reads, but he's reading the quarterback, and he falls underneath to make the interception. And the third tailback to be used by Mark Rick will get the handoff here. Danny Ware to the 44-yard line. Fumble. Did they, oh, they're calling him down. Ball is down by contact at the 44-yard line. And here's the interesting thing. Because he was called down, that is not a reviewable play. If they call that a fumble, it could have been reviewed. Danny Ware, only one carry last week against Georgia Tech. Had a big game against LSU in Athens last year, over 100 yards. Right knee close to being down before the ball came out, and line judge called him down. Rolled down. It'll be second down and three. Shockley being chased. Shockley lets it go. It's incomplete. And uh, it'll be third down and three. This is just, that will not go as a fumble because he was ruled down. Right. But this is one of those statistical anomalies. LSU has recovered only four of 20 fumbles mm -hmm. all season. And they haven't recovered a fumble since October the 1st. Some of those things are cyclical. You know, right. with turnover, some years you get it all going in the right way. Georgia had five interceptions all year last year. They had four in the first game against Boise State, and they just made their 15th of the year a moment ago. Third and three, Lumpkin is the running back now. Bobble on the snap. Lumpkin, first down at the 40-yard line. The reason there's a bobble on the snap is because Ryan Schnetzer or Russ Tanner, whoever's in there at center, has to be concerned with either Claude Roten or Kyle Williams lining up right across from him. And these two guys, you see Kyle Williams right up on the right ear of Ryan Schnetzer, number 95. And he's aware of that, and sometimes you're so anxious to get into your block, you don't make a great snap. But that time, Shockley able to retrieve it. Ryan Schnetzer is bound for medical school next year. He's going to attend the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta. His counterpart, Rudy Nicewanger of LSU, also going to medical school. Out to the flat, here's Massaqua. Mohamed Massaqua, who came on early in this season and has been very valuable as a wideout for this team. And what a great job by Sean Bailey, who caught the touchdown earlier. He got the key block. Otherwise, that play is knocked for a loss of yardage. Gets the block for his fellow receiver, Massaqua, and Georgia in excellent position again. Second down and two, the gain of eight. I'm curious whether Bo Pelini feels like he can't blitz as much as he'd like to without Jesse Daniels in as his starting safety. Stelts is over on the right side defensively now. Here's the handoff to Lumpkin. He weaves his way for first down yardage inside the 30. Now we mentioned a triumvirate of tailbacks for this uh, Georgia Bulldog team Danny Ware in the last four games 172 yards he wears number 28 Thomas Brown number 20 and Craig Lumpkin who had the big game in the win over Georgia Tech yeah, 11 carries 74 yards and the good thing about this even though it's hard to get them all equal numbers of, of footballs if they're all healthy you're going to have fresh legs in there every single play all the way through four quarters first down and 10 and Shockley this time will go from the spread formation. Seven nothing Bulldogs. Shockley pulls up, goes right side. Bailey's open. Got it. Touchdown Georgia.
In our program opening, DJ Shockley said he couldn't wait for this game. <laughs> He's not going to wake up from this dream for a while. What a start. 14-0 Bulldogs. Well, he got Jackson and Stelz the first touchdown. This time he's going to get Ronnie Prude and LaRon Landry with the pump fake. Watch the safety and the corner bite on DJ Shockley's pump fake with the shoulder. There's the pump fake. The corner bites. The safety bites. And the wide receiver is all alone in the end zone. Last year, when... They when these teams played in Athens, David Green threw five touchdowns and they jumped on LSU 24 to nothing. A similar start for the Georgia Bulldogs. 14 nothing, all Georgia. And Georgia seizing the opportunity on field position. Their last two drives have started on the average of the LSU 48 yard line. Thanks to some defensive plays, an interception and a sack. Mm. Sean Bailey, as you saw, got off to a great start this year, but it's been a, a dormant period for the last 10 weeks. Here's Skylar Green. Takes a knee. It'll come out to the 20. Full season is almost here, and CBS Sports Line is your destination for complete coverage. Get the latest bold predictions plus Dennis Dodd's expert analysis only at CBS Sports Line. Well, this is where this poise and patience for Jamarcus Russell really has to kick in. They, they won't panic here. They were down 10 nothing a couple weeks ago in the first half in Tuscaloosa on the road. Bit of, been, a lot of tight games. Bit of a surprise. They've got Chiron Carey in the backfield now. He gets the handoff, number two, the tiny guy, and picks up five yards. He has not been used no. much. And what this tells you also is that Joseph Adai is no good. I mean, he is just not healthy and not able to go the way they need him to go in a game like this. And I think that hurts them because Joseph Adai, ever since he hurt his ankle, they've lost a certain toughness in their offense. He was their most complete back and their toughest guy, and they don't have that in their offense right now, and particularly in their running game. Second down five. Gary on the sweep, coming left, turns the corner, might have gotten enough for the first down. Yes, he did. Out of bounds, just across the 30-yard line. Well, they have averaged less than three yards per carry yeah. in I mean, the last three games. And Joseph Adai, I mean, he was on a roll in the middle of the season. I mean, against Vanderbilt, he had 100 yards. Against Florida, 156 yards. And against Auburn, 24 carries, 105 yards. That's the last time LSU's had a 100-yard rusher. You see what he's done before the ankle injury and since then. Sharon Carey, 5'6", 197 pounds. Back-to-back -back carries. He's got a first down. Stelz is the fullback. Russell will throw it. Drills it on a line right side. Yes, sir. Dwayne Bow makes a catch. There's a football. Well, LSU cannot afford another turnover in this ball game. They turned it over three times last week against Arkansas. It looks like they're calling him down, and possession's going to remain with LSU. And there was no sell of the call by the linesman. No. He did not indicate down by contact. He just uh, rather nonchalant. Dwayne Bowes had a little trouble holding on to passes in the last couple games. And I think they're going to take a look at this. Trey Battle, who is only 170 pounds, he walked by me on the field before the game, and I said, I cannot believe that's the starting safety for Georgia. But he brings it when he comes to tackle. Dwayne Bow, good cushion. Nice throw by Russell. And as he's fighting for extra yardage, Battle comes over and puts a big hit on him. Greg Blue fell on the ball. Now here's from the opposite side. Now he could have either been down or they could have ruled that his progress had stopped. But no, he was on top of a player. I don't think that's down. Nor do I. Now, did they call his motion stopped and his forward progress stopped at that moment? Oh, that's a fumble. 
I think you're right. Doyle Jackson is the replay official. If the whistle did not blow, right. that is a fumble. And I'm just assuming that because it is under review, the whistle did not blow. And let's check it at regular speed, natural sound. Now I hear a whistle. <laughs> I didn't hear one before that. Progress was stopped, pushed backwards. It was a catch on the field. They called his forward progress stopped. And that was one of the possible things they might rule there. But again, LSU must protect the football in this game. In their big wins against Auburn and Alabama, they had zero turnovers. But in just about every other game this year, they have not done a good job of protecting the football. This is the largest deficit they've faced this year. Their only, lo only loss was in overtime at home to Tennessee. Second week of a distressing start to the season for all of them. Here's Sharon Carey again. I remember two years ago when we did the game, not the championship game between these two teams, but the team earlier in the year in Baton Rouge. Sharon Carey played very well for LSU that day. Ran the ball very well, ran for a touchdown. He hasn't been used a whole lot, but he's got some ability. And he's small and powerfully built, and he plays very low to the ground. He did not play against Arkansas. He had seven carries in the game at Ole Miss. Skyler Green took the direct snap from quarterback position and got the first down. They had to do that fast. You know, they really had to line up fast. Jamarcus Russell lined up as a wide receiver, and they had to snap it fast to try to fool the Georgia defense, and they did it. If you only made to make this work, you got to get lined up fast. Here's Russell, and this is Green. You got to go with a quick count and don't let the Georgia defense get set and react to it. And they were able to pull it off and get the first down with some nifty running by Skylar Green. And that is not the first time they've used him out of the backfield. Joseph Adai is now on the field for the first time. Late in the first quarter, Adai goes out wide to the right, and Russell back to throw. Throws it. A die hit at about the time the ball got there. Demario Minter. Joseph Adai, again, the most complete back when he's healthy. It's a right ankle that has bothered him, an ankle bruise, not a sprain. And you can just see, just not able to make that catch cleanly before Minter hits him in the back. Second down and 10. Andrew Whitworth, number 76, tonight starting his 51st consecutive game for LSU a school record battling against Quentin Moses that's one of the matchups that will feature tonight play fake Russell goes right sliding catch attempted not made boy they had it I mean J Jamarcus might have wanted to run this one because Quentin Moses who you just mentioned there is a flag down Quentin Moses chased this play so hard that Jamarcus Russell might have been able to run for 10 or 15 yards. Excellent fake on the bootleg. Watch Quentin Moses chase this play, and Russell's going to get out here and probably could have run it. Nobody outside. Now well, they're going to get a first down anyway. Off the penalty. Defensive holding on Georgia. And so a nice little drive put together here by LSU. Again, this team, five of their ten wins this year have been by four points or less. So they're, they're not going to panic getting behind. Jamarcus Russell, from the very beginning, had to bring his team back in the fourth quarter against Arizona State. First down and ten after the penalty. And this is Jacob Hester, the fullback, number 18. Two punches over the right side. Well, the first-year head coach at LSU, and what a ride it has been for Les Miles. 52 years of age, four years the head coach at Oklahoma State before he was chosen to replace Nick Saban. Graduate of Michigan, 1976, an offensive lineman there. 
actually became a trucking executive <laughs> for a year for a steel industry hauling outfit. He had charge of six 18-wheelers. He said they tried to promote him, and it didn't light his fire. So he wanted to get into coaching. He called Bo Schembechler, his whole coach, and got an assistant job. Look at this, the Mario Minter. What a start for number two. Well, this was a corner blitz timed perfectly by DeMario Minner, called perfectly by Willie Martinez, and Jamarcus Russell didn't see it. Here's Minner. He's coming off the corner, and Russell's not going to see him. Otherwise, he might have checked out of this play because DeMario Minner wraps up Carey behind the line of scrimmage because he timed it perfectly. See, that's a, that's a wasted play. You know, a lot of times we talk about audibling as you look at Willie Martinez. It's not just to get to a big play. It's to get out of a bad play. That time, Jamarcus should have audibled out of a bad play. Third and seven. Russell got a good block to Madai. Has a man open. Dwayne Bow, first down at the 13-yard line. Well, you're right. Joseph Adai got a nice block against the Blitz. Good pocket presence for Jamarcus Russell. And Dwayne Bow, his favorite receiver, right in the middle of his own defense, sits down and gives a nice target for Russell. Joseph Adai may not be 100% healthy, but watch him block on the edge here and do his job protecting his quarterback. Excellent. Great pocket, good protection for LSU, and Russell delivers. Gain of 20, the 10th play of this drive. Backs in the eye. Sharon Carey is back as the tailback. Here comes the blitz. Carey gets the handoff. And Jarvis Jackson, number 45, is there to make the tackle. But LSU trying to respond in the face of a 14-0 deficit on two touchdown passes. DJ Shockley. In the red zone thus far this season. 33 of 36. Pretty yeah. good. But look at the touchdown percentage. That's outstanding compared to the rest of college football. They get in there. They don't settle for three. Second down and nine at the 12. Two wide outs wide to the right side. Keith Zinger, the tight end, he is tight to the left. Play fake. Russell getting some pressure from Moses. Little flip to carry. Carry to the five. That'll be short of the first down. This almost looked like a, a busted play because Jamarcus Russell opened left to play fake and there was no back there. But they were still able to set up the screen to the right and make a nice play out of it. We finished one in Atlanta. They've got a 94-yard march to the other end. Mark Griff, fifth season. Les Miles, first. We'll return to the Georgia Dome after this message and a word to the local station. J. Shockley, fine first quarter, three of five, two touchdowns. And now his defensive teammates confront an LSU offense that looks at a third and three from the six. See, only six scoring drives of 10 plus plays. This is the 12th play of this current LSU drive. A die sets up to the right side, quarterback draw, and Russell very close for the first down. They'll have four shots from a foot out. This is an impressive LSU drive right here. No panic. Great poise by Jamarcus Russell. The offensive line asserting itself a little bit more in this drive. And Jamarcus Russell just kind of picking his way through there and getting his big body towards the goal line. And a player down for Georgia back at the eight-yard line. That's uh, Kedrick Golson, number 97. He's one of the real leaders. He and D.J. Shockley, probably the two most visible, vocal leaders on this team. He missed a few games early in the year with an elbow injury. He 
he didn't play in that Florida game as well as DJ Shockley. Here's the end of the play. Just kind of fell onto the pile. Hard to tell what he did at that point. Well, time has been taken on the field, and we'll uh, address the issue of the injury when we return to the Georgia Dome right after this. Kendrick Golston walked off unaided. He's on the sidelines. He's going to be fine. He might be ready to audition for a part in the Sopranos if you catch my drift. It's first and goal at the one. Adai is the setback behind Jacob Hester, the fullback. Three tight ends. That's Zinger, number 89. Hand off to the fullback. Hester. Oh, he fumbled the ball. Did he? Well, they marked him down. They yeah. marked him down. I thought the ball scored it out. Maybe it didn't. But he was stopped short of the goal line. Hester's not as big of a fullback as their other guy, Kevin Steltz, but he's a, a better ball carrier. Oh, boy. Oh, he got that I, ball across. Yes. I thought I saw the ball. Yes. But I thought it was a fumble. He just reached it out over the plane. I'm not sure. Oh. Looks look like a the, touchdown. Uh, I, I think it's probably right. It's under review. Or did they call timeout to make sure it got reviewed? I think LSU called a timeout. Well, let's uh, look at it again. I saw the ball, and I thought he fumbled. Looking at this, he reached it across the goal line. I think that might be a touchdown for LSU, unless his knees were down. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Time call. We'll return. Well, there was an animated discussion with Mark Richt and Rocky Good while we were in commercial. Well, Mark Richt is contending that LSU broke the huddle with 12 guys before they were able to call timeout. But the LSU offense came from the sideline, so I don't know how they were able to see unless there was 12 guys that ran out. Okay, well, good eyes by Coach Rick, but... Nonetheless, tying him out, given to LSU, and second and goal. And Jamarcus Russell squirts through left guard. Touchdown, LSU. Excellent drive in response to the quick lead by Georgia. Again, last year when they played in Athens, thanks to a couple LSU turnovers, Georgia jumped out 24 to nothing. LSU never really in the ball game. This time they spot a two touchdown lead, but they come back and cut the gap. Chris Jackson on for the extra point. It's going to be Colt David, number six. And the kick is up. And good. Fourteen to seven. Our coverage of the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper will continue after this word from your local station. Fourteen seven here, an eighty-yard drive in fourteen plays. Now Chris Jackson will kick it deep to Ramarcus Brown, number eleven, who fumbled the opening kickoff of the game. We'll take this one a yard deep up as he gets near the 18-yard line. And let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Guys, with LSU giving up two big passing touchdowns already, don't be surprised if you see injured safety Jesse Daniels out there. We haven't seen him yet because he's suffering from a left ankle injury, but he was getting treatment and trying to run on the sidelines. He also had some words for the secondary after that second touchdown. You can tell he wants in there. The interesting thing is both touchdowns didn't come against man with a blitz. It was against a zone defense where they just got fooled. Handoff right side. Big run out near the 25-yard line. Thomas Brown. Let's go back to the studio for this game-changing performance powered by Pontiac. Here's Tim Brendo. 
Vern, a couple of years ago when LSU was playing Georgia, Havoc was being uh, thrown out in all the other games, but not today. There'll be no controversy. Matt Liner to Fred Davis, 15 yards to the strike. It should be USC and Texas for the national title. All right, Tim, thank you. 14 to 7 here. And on second down, the handoff. Brown comes left. First down. Now, if you look at Georgia's rushing numbers right now, that's their seventh run, and they've only got about 28 yards rushing, which is four yards a carry. That doesn't sound like much, but it's been effective enough to make this LSU defense respect the run because both touchdown passes have come off play action. And they've got to run and have some balance, and Bo Pelini knows right now Georgia's running the ball effectively enough to give them offensive balance. First and 10 now with a 14-7 lead. Two touchdowns by Shockley. Play fake. Blitz. Flips it out. Brandon Sutherland, the uh, fullback, and Ronnie Prude is right there defensively. But Kyle Williams. Kyle Williams was in there. Craig Steltz was the safety coming, blitzing outside. But Kyle Williams is going to create the pressure inside. Again, he loves to line up right on the nose. Works his way through. Cameron Vaughn in there. Steltz in there. One of the few blitzes that Bo Pelini has called so far in the ballgame tonight. Trying to get after D.J. Shockley a little bit more than that one. Now the new center in there is Russ Tanner. He rotates with Ryan Schnetzer. And he's got this series. Here comes the blitz again. Shockley chased right. Cameron Vaughn chases him. Look at that throw. Wow! And almost complete. Both of these quarterbacks have a tremendous ability to make big throws on the run when they get flushed out. They both have outstanding arms. This time, the blitz is going to come inside, and that forces DJ Shockley to take it to the perimeter. And he throws with his shoulders to the sideline. I mean, he didn't even get his shoulders square and still got this ball all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A lot of pushing and shoving back there between Jonathan Zenon, Zenon and Massaqua, but incomplete in third and ten. D.J. Shockley injured his knee against Arkansas, did not play against Florida. Still wears a brace, said it doesn't bother him. Here's the blitz, got him, fourth down. Three plays in a row, LSU brought pressure. They, they've changed their philosophy now on this possession and said, you know what? We're not going to let D.J. Shockley sit back there against a four-man rush and throw the ball deep down the field. We've got to go after him. They're going to bring linebackers and their defensive linemen and come after D.J. Shockley. Overload inside. They still have a free safety back, so it's not like they're just playing complete zone, uh, zero coverage, but they still got pressure three plays in a row. Skyler Green at the 30. Gordon Ely Kelso, Mark Rick said, well, you might want a directional punt, but he hasn't done it all year. Right. Not so sure how well he would do. Nice and high. Good hang time. Fair catch called by Skyler Green. Takes it at the 40-yard line. Best field position to start for LSU by far. They've started on their 23, their 20 twice, and now they're all the way out to the 40. And they are fresh from a 14-play drive for their first touchdown of the game. Tuesday on America's number one network, CBS presents the most beautiful women in the world modeling the sexiest fashions you've ever seen. Catch an eyeful of Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, and the world's leading supermodels on the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show Tuesday on CBS. First three possessions, punt, interception, but the last impressive. 14 plays, 80 yards, touchdown, Jamarcus Russell. Now Justin Vincent is back on as a running back. Double tight end set, spread wide. Vincent, oh, Quentin Moses, hello! Now, Quentin Moses has had an outstanding season for this Georgia defense. Taking the place of David Pollock as their main rush end. Gets off the ball quick. Great path to the ball carrier. Nobody picked him up, expecting him to maybe go upfield a little bit more. But he made a direct path to Justin Vincent. And for the Georgia defense now, three tackles for loss already here in the first half. Now, he was reflecting on that loss two years ago here 
about embarrassed how embarrassed they were because they were completely dominated in that game. Second down. Play fake. Russell back. Flips it out for Vincent in the backfield. But no Siree. Kim you know, Jennings, number 23. Because of the pressure, Jamarcus Russell had to throw this ball with a little more loft than he would have liked to. And because of the loft, that enabled the safety, Trey Battle, to get to the ball carrier. It's a little loopy, and Tim Jennings, rather, was able to get there and make the play. Charles Johnson is the guy who got pressure on Russell and forced that screen throw to be a little bit higher than he wanted it to be. Tim Jennings, one of the heroes of the win over Georgia Tech with a game-saving interception at the end of regular time. Tech going in for what would have been the tying touchdown or perhaps the winning. And Russell gets it. Stunts by the defense. Russell flings it deep for Doucette. And Tim Jennings is back there to knock it loose. And Doucette has hurt his knee. I thought he was going to make this catch. It was a beautiful throw by Russell. And Doucette timed it perfectly going up between two Georgia defenders just not able to come down with the ball and came down awkwardly grabbing his right leg Jennings had no idea where the ball was and it was perfectly thrown by Jamarcus Russell and so early do set the sophomore from St. Martinsville Louisiana He had a big special teams play last week in the win over Arkansas. Tackled Jacob Skinner, the punter in the end zone for a safety. Mm. Uh, time has been called as another injured player is getting uh, some medical help. Early Doucette, sophomore from LSU. Tim Brando in New York coming up with the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer and I will get you caught up on all of today's action, including Lamar Owens scoring on one of six rushing touchdowns for Navy in a 42-23 win over Army. Now back to the SEC Championship game. Fourteen seven here, Tim. Georgia leads it in 2003. Chuck Bartlett of Natchez, Mississippi, won $400,000 in the Dr. Pepper Championship Challenge. Oh! Coming up, another lucky contestant, Craig Kendall, will have his chance to win up to $1 million. Coming up at halftime. I saw a guy win $70,000 earlier today in the Big 12 championship game, so. Here's the punt. They blocked it. Broke through on Jackson. First time in his career he's ever had a punt blocked. It's Brian McClendon. Brian McClendon got the block, but credit also Ramarcus Brown for drawing the outside block to free up McClendon. Ramarcus Brown was lined up as a gunner. He came and timed it perfectly, and that drew the outside block, freeing up McClendon. Watch, here's Ramarcus Brown. He's going to come in and then draw this outside block, and McClendon is going to get the block. Perfect timing on the punt block. Here comes Brown. He draws the block. Nobody picks up McClendon and Georgia in scoring territory. Special teams. Yes, sir. First down at the 15. The toss sweep to the left side, Craig Lumpkin. And another look at the block from Brian McClendon. That was just perfect execution. The one guy draws the block from a die, and then nobody is able to slide over on McClendon. John Fabris is the punt coach for Georgia also coaches the defensive ends perfect execution on that one 12th block kick under Mark Rick the second this season second down a 14 to 7 game the need is 8 with 925 to go before halftime Shockley with the play change and LSU showed their hand a little early and DJ able to change the play Lumpkin inside the 10. Even though D.J. Shockley is only in his first year as a starter, he's a senior. 
He had 26 games of experience with no starts coming into this season. And he watched David Green execute this offense for four years. So he knows what to do in those situations. LSU showed their hand. He checked off calmly. As you look at what Georgia has done in the red zone this year. Not a great TD percentage. Boy, they'd love to get one here. Third and two at the seven. McClendon starts right. Now comes back over to the left side. Big hole right over Max Gene Gillis right now on the right side. Play fake. Shockley darts to his left. To the five. Inside the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia. Chris Jackson. The block of his punt by Brian McClendon sets up the touchdown. Third of the half for Georgia. And you can call the perfect defense. You can cover all the receivers. But you can't defend an individual play like DJ Shockley makes right here. Watch LSU. They're going to cover the play. It's a play action pass on third and short. Nobody's open. They've got pressure. But they can't tackle number three. And Martrez Milner with the last block got Shockley into the end zone. Tremendous individual effort by a special player, DJ Shockley. Brian McClendon with the punt block to set up the go-ahead touchdown. Chris Jackson, first time in his career, he's had one go south. And D.J. Shockley at the end of it. What a great start for the Georgia offense. You know, LSU's defense has played great down the stretch. But this is the best offense they've played other than Auburn this whole season. This has been a defensive-oriented conference this year. But the two teams that have played excellent offense, for the most part, have been Auburn and Georgia. And LSU has got their hands full with Georgia tonight. Got a glimpse of early Doucette on the LSU sideline. The injury obviously to his right ankle, not his knee. And now Katu will kick off. Skyler Green chased five yards back, allows it to go through the end zone, and let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Guys, LSU trainers are saying that Doucette has a right ankle sprain. From the look on his face, it seems pretty bad. They are icing it to see if the swelling goes down. If not, they will take him in for x-rays. Back to you. Thanks, Tracy. Well, the good news for LSU is wide receiver is one of their deepest positions. I mean, they, they've got a lot of talented wide receivers. Early Doucette, one of their better guys, but they've got other guys. Buster Davis breaks the huddle wide to the left side. Bo is wide right. Skyler Green is in the slot. Hand off. Sharon Carey. Almost to the 25. You know, I want to look at this touchdown one more time to emphasize the individual effort because as he goes back, he's going to make two of the best players on LSU's defense miss. Melvin Oliver has him hemmed in, number 90. He's the leading sacker. Now, he beats him. Now, the next guy he's going to make miss is LaRon Landry, the team's leading tackler. He's able to beat him and get the ball all the way to the end zone. I mean, you just can't defend an individual effort like that. Another injured player. This time it's the linebacker, Brandon Miller, number 12, who was down at the 27-yard uh, line. Well, they've had their share of injuries in their linebacking core. You mentioned Tony Taylor. He missed some games. Brandon Miller, Danny Verdun-Wheeler all have missed time. Jarvis Jackson has missed some time. And... Uh, Brandon Miller in the middle of the screen, number 12. Ouch. Well, the good news, I mean, it, it still could be serious, but it looked like he was able to get his foot out of there. Even though there was strong contact, he did get his cleats out of the ground. Mm. 
Sophomore from Colquitt, Georgia. Brandon Miller, largest of this uh, group of linebackers. You see, 6'4, 238 pounds. And will uh, be able to walk off unaided. With, uh, I think that's the point that you just yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah, that, that shoe, his foot was able to get out of there. Even though it, his leg got bent severely, he was able to get his foot out of there. Mm. So Miller to the sidelines, LSU trailing by 14 now. Picked up five on the last play. Carey, the senior, behind Jamarcus Russell, the sophomore. Blitz. Russell with good protection. Wide open is David Jones. The tight end with the grab. And he held on despite a very hard hit. Excellent work by a couple of people. First of all, Chiron Carey, who's playing more than he's played in a long time, is going to get his blitz pickup. Watch the tailback Chiron Carey come in and stick the linebacker. Excellent protection by the front five. Carey picks up Jarvis Jackson. Now Russell, a beautiful throw over the linebackers, and Jones holds on even though he's hit in the back by Trey Battle. A lot of people doing their job. You know, offensive football takes all 11 doing it right. Gain of 26, a first down at the 49. Play fake. Russell being chased by Will Thompson. They got him at the 41-yard line. Marcus Howard finally used Thompson's pressure to get there. And, you know... I bet I don't see Les Miles right now but I bet he's very upset with this because the one thing he said to us about Jamarcus Russell is that later in the season he's learning the consequences of his quarterback decisions and he knows that throwing it away is not such a bad thing. That's one where he needed to throw it away. They had good coverage downfield. You just got some positive momentum on the throw to David Jones. Now you've knocked yourself way back on this second down play. That is the second uh, sack of the ball game. The first was a loss of 14. This time a loss of 10. Second and 20. Georgia brings five. Inside to Bow. He turns outside and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. One of the reasons that you know you've got to be careful with a guy like Jamarcus Russell coaching him as you want him to be able to improvise and use his strength and his ability to break tackles and make plays outside the pocket but he also has to make decisions of when to get rid of the football but he's so strong and so hard to tackle and throws so well on the run that you don't want to take that part of his game away from him he's made too many big plays during the course of this season to say hey throw it away every time there's pressure Third and ten. Three-man Three man rush. rush. Yep. Yes. Russell. Diving try, and it is caught by Buster Davis at the 37-yard line. That's a first down. Now, when you rush three and drop eight, you don't expect this many big holes in your defense, but there's a big hole in the middle. Buster Davis got hands underneath it. Good catch, and a big first down for LSU. Andrew Whitworth wannabe. <laughs> He's got a long way to go. First down and 10 after the 12 yard game. Here's a dive. Down to the 32. Let's go back to the studio for the game changing performance. Powered by Pontiac. Vernon Todd, Matt Leinert has all day to throw. He finds Lindell White on a 24-yard score. They just changed quarters. It's 52 to 6. A combined 122 points by Texas and USC today. Well, while we were gone there, Personal one foul, thing we missed. Late hit, number 64, yeah. offense. Penalties 15 yards from the end of the run, and it will be second down. I think it's safe to say that academically the smartest guy on the field tonight is Rudy Nieswanger, the center. But he just made a play that wasn't very smart. Well after the play was over, he went down and tried to get an extra block right in the middle of the field. And the play's over, and here comes Nieswanger right there and just in broad view and, a, and another costly setback for this LSU offense. You mentioned medical school. He's bound for the LSU medical school in Shreveport. Graduated with a perfect 4.0 grade point average, and it's second down and 18 after that personal foul penalty. Russell being chased. 
That's an example of how he can get loose. And he's down the sidelines and out of bounds. There was a woulda, coulda, shoulda. And it's just kind of scary how athletic he is for how big he is. 6'6", 200, and probably closer to 60 pounds at this point in the season. Very nimble. Doesn't like to run a lot, but he makes a lot of big throws outside of the pocket. He can really throw it well on the run, going left or right. And that sets up a third down and 15. See his record versus top 25 teams this year. Todd mentioned they had five wins of four points or less, and their only loss was to Tennessee in overtime after they blew a 21 0 halftime lead. Third and 15. Flags. Pre snap penalty. A pair of penalties on the offensive line that will uh, not sit well with the head coach, Andrew Whitworth. That sets up a third down and 20. And their most experienced guys. Whitworth, his 51st start. Rudy Nieswanger making his 30th start tonight. 4.38 to go, 21 to 7, Bulldogs. Nieswanger sends it back. Russell goes deep. Deep in the corner in the end zone. It is incomplete. DeMario. Buster Davis and Greg Blue was back there. And Demario Minter is having a whale of a ball game so far. I mean, this was a great shot by Jamarcus Russell. Go ahead and take a shot at it. You don't have anything else open. Throw it down there and see if your guy can make a play. But Demario Minter turns, he finds the ball, and he's able to get his right hand in and knock it away. You know, watching that throw from Jamarcus Russell, I just have to smile. I know what you're thinking about. <laughs> Joe Kynes, <laughs> defensive coordinator at Alabama, said of Russell, he can flick it with his wrist 50 yards. If he grunts, he can heave it 80. Here's Chris Jackson, no pressure this time. And a fair catch is called and taken by Thomas Flowers at the 14-yard line. Demario Minter, one of the 19 seniors on this Georgia team. Well, he's played great last week against Georgia Tech. He's picked up right where he left off. A couple of nice deflections. Playing with extreme confidence. And he also got the big interception that led to Georgia's second touchdown of the ballgame. 420 to go before the break. Bulldogs by 14. Danny Ware is the running back now. Motion. Now there's the use of the snap count again by DJ Shockley, a senior. He knows that Claude Roten right now and Kyle Williams are probably on the sidelines saying, hey, defense, we've got to step up and make a play. We've got to make something All happen. Sides, defense, number 98 is in the neutral zone at the snap. The penalty's five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Les Miles mentioned he's 52 years of age, longtime assistant. And uh, in his first year now as the head coach, Affleck. it's time for the. He just said it. Affleck. <laughs> Trivia question. Okay, here's the question after the carry. Name the only two coaches to win an official SEC title in their first season. Or if you like it plural, it's first seasons. Mm -hmm. Well, already Les Miles is the first LSU coach to ever beat Florida, Alabama, and Auburn in the same season. And he's accomplished a lot in his short time in Baton Rouge. Second and three. Down at the 26 yard line, but with a first down. Tackle made by Chavis Jackson. You know, and just to finish up a little bit more with Les Miles as Georgia gets the first down, I, I think he has to receive a lot of serious consideration for Coach of the Year 
taking into account everything he's gone through and what he's had to lead and navigate this team through. Uh, you know, with the, the tumult that happened early in the year, uh, nobody could have anticipated that. And I think he's done a marvelous job of keeping this team together and playing with focus. First down on the last play. Here's where Cameron Vaughn up high to help provide the stop at the 32-yard line. One thing that people may not realize about this LSU team, they are playing their 11th straight week. Because of the Hurricanes early in the season, they lost both of their open dates. And so this is their 11th straight week of playing games. It started on a Monday night back in September at home against Tennessee, and they've had no let-up. Here's a handoff to Ware again. Vaughn chose two and a half to go before the break. And Georgia has run the ball with enough effectiveness in this first half. It's not impressive numbers, but it's good enough to make this LSU defense play on their heels a little bit and respect the run. And that's the same thing they did last year in Athens. They were able to run. Tonight, only 15 carries for 54 yards, but it's enough to make them play both pass and run and open up the play action passing for D.J. Shocker. Third and two with nearly two minutes to go before the break. And Shockley will change the play again. Poise, a lot of poise. Quarterback draw, four-man rush. Shockley might, uh, let's see where the spot comes. Very close for the first down. We got a left-footed spot. <laughs> so, that's usually helpful to the offense. Design quarterback draw all the way. First down and Mark Rick in Georgia very comfortable going into the locker room with a 21 to 7 lead at this point. Coming up at halftime the Geico halftime report. We'll go back to New York. Tim and Spencer bring you up to date with the. Uh, Conference championship games as well as the Army Navy highlights and other things going on in the world of college football. Blitz, Shockley a little low into the outside. It'll be second down and 10. Georgia has all three of their timeouts remaining here in the first half if they do decide to, to try to get in scoring range again. I'll tell you one thing, Brandon Couture before the game was booming it. I mean, he was kicking it from well over 50 yards easily. So Mark Richt is probably thinking, if we get in range, I'm going to let him try a long field goal. Brandon Katu has two kicks in excess of 55 made this year. One of 58, the other of 56. So they need about 25 yards. We've got 110 to go before halftime. Stunts this time, and Shockley spins, gets to the 42-yard line. They're going to call timeout here. I think that's what Mark is thinking right now. I mean, let's let's not be foolish. Let's not do something that really hurts us, but let's try to see if we can get into field goal range and let Katu try to add three more. Georgia uses one of its allotment of three. They're looking at a third and six when we come back. Take a look at Georgia's last scoring drive. The Home Depot tools for success. It started with a blocked punt by Brian McClendon. That gave him excellent field position. And then Craig Lumpkin with another nice run. 17 runs in the first half. And then it was DJ Shockley on a nifty bit of running off a broken play to give Georgia a 21 to 7 lead. McClendon, his dad, Willie, one of the great stars in the history of Georgia football, a running back. And uh, with a big special teams play tonight. Shockley a modest three of eight, yeah. but uh, two of the three have been for long touchdowns. Third and six. Georgia's three for three tonight on third and one to six. So this is a good area for him. Blitz again, and here goes Shockley freelancing. Now he's got a little bit of room and a nice play yeah. to haul him down by Chavis Jackson, number 21. Now, if that would have been a defensive lineman chasing, I think Shockley would have got past him and got to the corner and maybe get a first down. But because that was Chevis Jackson who was blitzing, he was able to fall back in and make the play. And LSU 
uses a timeout now. There's Shockley being chased and caught. Georgia will punt in a moment. Tuesday on America's number one network, only four teams remain in the amazing race with just two episodes to go before the finish line. The competition heats up to its most intense on the three-time Emmy-winning Amazing Race Tuesday on CBS. 21-7, Skylar Green about to go into second place all-time career punt returns. Into first place, rather. Kelso. Oh, he nailed this. Wow. And then the bounce. <laughs> How do you do? We talked about field position. And field position is important for your offense, even if they don't score. Georgia started this drive on their own 13-yard line. They moved the ball out close to midfield and had to punt. And then they downed the punt in the end of the half. That was beautiful. And you know what? Claude Roten almost blocked that punt. I mean, that big guy was in there and had a chance to block the punt. Instead, it ends up inside the five. Well, David Toms, the PGA champion, is in the house. But he's a big LSU fan, so I don't think he appreciated that wedge shot. High formation. A die. And let's get the answer to the Aflac. 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 <laughs> wow, I got two ducks. Wow. Name the only two coaches to win an official SEC title in their first season. Bernie Moore of LSU, 1935. John Vaught of Ole Miss in 1947. Now, Gator fans will say, what about Steve Spurrier in 1990? Well, the Gators were on probation, so not recognized as SEC champs. And let's quickly go down to Tracy. Thanks, guys. Coach, it's plain and simple. How do you get back in this game? Well, we first of all, we uncharacteristically play, you know, the ball on the ground, let some long passes get beat us. We get back in this game, we can score quickly. I think we got to play solid, sound defense and play the kind of ball that got us in this game. We do that the second half. We're, we're, we can be heard for them. Thanks a lot. Good luck. See ya. Back to you guys. All right, Tracy. That's the end of the first half of the score 21 to 7. Georgia coming up. The Dr. Pepper Championship Challenge right after this word from your local station. Wow, Claude wrote. <laughs> Got it. Touchdown. There's the punt. They blocked it. Inside the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia. Full house at the Georgia Dome. We get set for the start of the third quarter. Georgia up 21 to 7 over Louisiana State University. The 2005 SEC Championship, Georgia versus LSU, is brought to you in high definition television by Prudential Financial. Just a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson had a chance to chat with Mark Richt. Coach, a big lead, but knowing how LSU has fought back this year, how do you keep the momentum going? Oh, you just count on your seniors to keep getting after them and making sure their teammates don't let up. We, we know we, we have some big momentum plays. We might not have any of those left. we got to play football. Thanks a lot. Yes. Mark Richt in his fifth season as the head coach at the uh, University of Georgia LSU Todd gets the ball to start right. the second half and I think that's very important I think it's important for LSU to get off to a good start to start the third quarter no panic I mean they're still in this ball game Les Miles told Tracy at the end of the half 
They've got to cut down some of the mistakes. The interception, block punt was a huge play for Georgia in that first half. But this first possession, very important for the LSU offense. And I, I'm wondering whether Les Miles asked Kyle Williams to talk to the team in the locker room at halftime. Because when they were down 10-0 in Alabama, he talked to the team and they came out on fire to start the second half. And they received the kick to open this half. It's taken at the 10-yard line by Skyler Green. Shakes the first tackle. Can't get by the second he is down at the 18-yard line. Uh, Kyle Williams, uh, not the loudest of men, said this to his teammates in Tuscaloosa. We're not playing LSU football. We need to start relying on each other. This team divided cannot win. Les Miles said he's not uh, the most emotional of players. So there was a sense of urgency when he addressed his teammates. Yeah, and it was really only supposed to be for the defense, but he was so vocal that everybody in the locker room heard it and everybody responded. And right now it's the LSU offense that has the first opportunity to change the tide in this football game. Jamarcus Russell first down and 10 the 6 4 sophomore from Mobile Alabama backs in the eye. Chiron Carey gets the start of tailback to open the third quarter toss being led by Seltzer around the left side. And Jarvis Jackson knocks him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the halftime stats presented by BP. Well, no real glowing numbers. Only 15 yards for LSU rushing. I think the big thing is right down here, that our average starting field position. We talked how important field position would be in this ballgame. Georgia with a 21-yard difference to the better in that first half. Gain of six on first down, second and four. Quentin Moses. I thought Quentin Moses was close to being off sides. He got a great jump off the ball. And Chiron Carey, I think, was trying to make a quick cutback and lost his footing and went down. Watch Quentin Moses up at the top. I mean, he got a great jump to start this play. Actually, Golston got a jump, too, and Moses slipped inside into the backfield. And that's the fifth tackle for loss for this Georgia defense in the ballgame. And Moses is going up against the all-conference player Andrew Whitworth number 76. He gives away 75 pounds in a couple of inches. He's got three tackles tonight. Third and seven. Russell with time. Dances right has a man open. It's incomplete. He was open but just by a stride it was Benny Brazell. Nice job pressuring Russell with only a four man rush. Georgia dropping seven into coverage, two deep safeties. Here's Whitworth and Moses. Moses fighting his way inside, and that forced Russell to leave the pocket and have to make this throw on the run. And Chris Jackson, who had a punt blocked earlier in the ball game, the pivotal play in the first half, he is back to punt on fourth and seven. Thomas Flowers. One punt return for a touchdown this year. Nice and high. Fair catch call by Flowers. Gathers it in at the 34-yard line. Monday on The Late Show, Dave welcomes the very funny Billy Crystal. And Tuesday, don't miss Madonna right here on CBS, America's number one network. For Georgia in that first half only threw eight passes. D.J. Shockley only completed three, but two of them were for long touchdowns. I think they've got to try to find a way to get the ball to Leonard Pope here in the second half. Nothing was thrown his way in the first half. LSU is going to clamp down on those wideouts a little more. It might open up the middle more for the big tight end, Leonard Pope. Pope is uh, tied for the lead in catches for the season with 32. Has not uh, caught one tonight on first down. Hand off to Thomas Brown. He comes left, and there is nothing there. Kyle Williams we just talked about him and his leadership and his emotion with this team. I mean if he embodies this LSU football team this year I think as much if not more than anybody else right over the center. Claude Roten's out at the tackle position but he just fights his way through the block of the center Schnetzer and in there for the tackle. I mean that's just great leverage and strength at the point of attack by Kyle Williams. Kyle one of three married uh, men on this team his wife Jill in the stands. Married last spring. Second down and 10. 
Shockley with a play fake. Under pressure. Darts out to his right. Melvin Oliver chasing. He lets it go for Pope. And is there a flag? flag yes, yeah. there is a flag. Had a little trouble finding it. Yeah, he did. Down in the bottom of his pocket. Bo Pelini is over there saying this was an uncatchable pass, but you know what? Leonard Pope, six foot seven. So he's going to catch some high throws. Shockley is able to get away from pressure. Here's the coverage. Hollis grabs the jersey. Could have called holding right there. Maybe they did call it that way. You know? He's 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, they called pass interference, but they very easily could have called holding prior to that penalty on Kenneth Hollis. That, that's a tough matchup. A linebacker at six feet tall going against Leonard Pope. And again, Todd, you got a sense of the strength of Shockley's arm on that oh, play. Yeah. I mean, he, he he's got a great it. arm. Yeah, he's not nearly as big as Jamarcus Russell, but he has got a great throwing arm. Bo Pelini telling us on the phone on Wednesday he can throw it much, much better than a lot of people think. Talking about DJ Shockley. I want to tell you what the NFL scouts think about him here after this play, too. First down and 10. Shockley with a draw play. Brown has some room. Nick Jones is out there leading the way. And it's a first down, Georgia at the 39. Again, going back to trying to establish that balance. Play action pass. It all comes out of the I formation. Sutherland lead blocking in there. Nick Jones out in front of the play. And Thomas Brown running low to the ground. Ryan Schnetzer with a good block from the center position as well. Gain of 12, a first down. Brown was 27 yards on six carries now. They'll try the pull draw play again. Left side this time. DJ Shockley erupted at the start of this game. Well, he has waited for a moment like this. He waited five years, four of them behind David Green, to be the starter. And he came out right on target tonight. Two long touchdown throws against zone defense, and then a touchdown run with a nifty bit of footwork to get the 21 points on the board. But DJ Shockley, I think the NFL scouts early in the year thought he was a great athlete. But after the way he played against Auburn, 20 of 36 for 304 yards and a couple touchdowns, I think they start looking at him now more as a definite NFL prospect. He's going to play in the Senior Bowl because of that game. Here's the roll to the left. He lobs it out. He's got a man wide open. Brian McClendon at the 29-yard line. Brian McClendon, punt block earlier, had the game-winning touchdown last week against Georgia Tech at 19-yarder, goes up high in the air and makes this catch. He had a couple drops last week. One of them bounced off his hands and ended up as an interception for Georgia Tech, but he made the game-winning touchdown catch with three minutes and 18 seconds left. And a nice catch right there. Now Danny Ware is in. They'll go with a power formation as Brown is also in the backfield. And they give it to Brown. He goes right, stiff arm, gets around the corner, and Ronnie Proof drives him out of bounds, but not before. And there is a flag. And Les Miles is livid. I mean, he wants his team to stay with their aggressiveness, and he thinks the contact was made before they got to the white. But I think LaRon Landry came up the last guy to make contact and hit him out of bounds. Here's Ronnie Prue trying to wrap up. Here comes LaRon Landry out of bounds before the hit. And Les Miles is close to the action, but it was fast over there as well. Prude first. And that's 30 yards in penalties on this drive for Georgia. I mean, if you're LSU and you want to come out of the locker room and make a statement, this is not the statement you want to make. Here's one of the realities of uh, college football in 2005. They pause and look at the jumbotron to see was I or was I not. And Les Miles, irate. But I think it was a good call. It was close, but he was out of bounds when, when Landry, Landry hit him. First down and 10 after the penalty. They had the first down before it was marked off. Shockley, Brown in trouble. Goes right, not very far. Nice job by Glenn Dorsey. And another flag down. This time it might be a face mask. And Les Miles is really beside himself. Back-to-back -back plays against his defense. 
Excellent penetration by Place Glenn Dorsey. Back. Number 30, five yard penalty from the end of the run, still first down. It's LaRon Landry, their starting free safety, one of the best ball players in the conference. Back to back penalties. First, the personal foul, and then the five yard face mask. You're having enough trouble stopping DJ Shockley in the Georgia offense. Georgia offense. You don't want to give him 35 yards of free real estate like they've done on this drive. First down and eight after the penalty. And again, the I formation with double tight ends. Left side, Craig Lumpkin. There's another stiff arm. He's out of bounds. Don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Les Miles, seemingly the mildest of men, but uh, after that first penalty, the out of bounds, unnecessary roughness. Well, part of it is he's trying to protect his defense, and the other part is he knows that this is the most critical time in the game for his football team, right here to start the third quarter. Their offense didn't do anything. Their first possession, and now the defense is giving them some problems. Second and seven at the nine. Lumpkin to the five. Third and two. I just think Georgia's patience with their running game has been a big thing tonight. They, they, they've not run for a lot of flashy yards. But they've run for tough yards. And you know, when, when Quentin Moses talked about how bad they felt in the 2003 championship game, when they got dominated, they meant physically dominated because Georgia prides themselves on being a physical football team. And they were out physical clearly that night. Last year they weren't out physical, and they're not being out physical in this game tonight as well. Lumpkin is the featured back on third and two. Shockley gives it to Lumpkin, and I do his not think he down. got the first down. I think down. his knee was down. I think he's going to get a good spot because I think his knee was down before he reached that ball forward. Still going to bring up a fourth down. Good penetration on the right side. Chase Pittman did a nice job of standing up the block of Leonard Pope. And a good stop for the Tigers after really struggling with the penalties. Katu, 102 points for the season. And he is 21 of 27 from the field this year. This amounts to uh, something similar to an extra point. Brandon Katu knocks it home, adds three, equaling the number on Shockley's back, and it's 24 to 7. So thrust and parry in the third quarter. LSU can't get it going. Georgia gets three. This SEC Championship Diamond Moment is presented by Kay Jewelers. In 2002, Georgia made its first appearance in the championship game. The dogs jumped all over Arkansas when Corey Bryant blocked a punt on the Hogs' first possession. Georgia scored on the next play and rolled to its first SEC title in 20 years. The block punt was a key play in uh, the 2002 championship game that Georgia won. A block punt, a key play in tonight's ball game as well, as Georgia has a 24 to 7 lead. Mark Richt in his fifth season came here as the offensive coordinator, had been at Florida State University, and uh, has just had an excellent impact on this Georgia Bulldog football program. 9.52 to go, 24 to 7. Uga leads Lesieux by 17. Skyler Green will bring it out, but not very far. Excellent coverage. Excellent coverage. Kick. You know, the kicking has been excellent for Georgia tonight as well. They've kicked it directionally off the kickoff and the punt. And that was perfect. Keelan Johnson is the guy down there. You see where they put him in the corner, so he only can return it one way. He's one yard deep. He hesitates a little bit. He can only go up the left sideline, and Georgia down there to cover perfectly. Special teams. Yep. Stressed Field at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Special dog. Hug of the sixth. First down and ten. Backs in the eye. Nice swinger, the center. Jamarcus Russell, the sophomore quarterback. 
They've got to go 90 to get a touchdown. Hand off, Vincent. Justin Vincent, the junior. Second down and five. They'll keep it on the ground again, Vincent. About a yard short, just across the 20-yard line. And yeah, let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, Vern. Two injury updates on the Georgia side of the ball. Starting linebacker Brandon Miller is in street clothes and is out for the game with a sprained left knee. And on the other side of the ball, LSU wide receiver Early Doucette is also out for the game. X-rays came back negative. They are calling it a bad right ankle sprain. What that means for Georgia is that Danny Verdun Wheeler, number 42, will be in the ball game. And Danny Verdun Wheeler has played all three linebacker positions. Sam, which is on the strong side or the tight end side, the weak side and the middle. So he will be in there at the strong side linebacker, replacing Brandon Miller. First down for LSU. There's Danny Verdun Wheeler. Experienced backup for the Georgia Bulldogs. Those uh, decals on the back of the helmets, by the way, the bones, the white bones represent athletic achievement. The black bones represent academic excellence. Vince Dooley got the idea from Bo Schembechler, the University of Michigan. And you suggested that we had to go to the offensive line to find a lot of black bones. You did say that, didn't you? Well, they're normally your smartest guys. Here's Russell. And quarterback. Flings it out. That one's caught. No. Looked like a face mask. Apparently was not. Catch is made by Jacob Hester, number 18, the fullback. Again, LSU, a lot of time left in the ball game. They've got to stay with balance. And, and what Georgia is doing some right now with a 24-7 lead, they're playing with a lot of two safety look. And with two safeties back, that tells LSU you need to run the football because your numbers favor the running game in normal personnel if both safeties are back. If they start bringing a safety up and adding an extra man in the box around the line of scrimmage, and that dictates that you throw the football. Second down and five. 24-7, largest deficit LSU has faced this season. Play fake, Russell being chased, flings it out, caught at the 27-yard line. Tackle made at the 28, it's the tight end, David Jones. Uh, Jamarcus Russell, the 6'4", sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. Well, they didn't get off to a very good start. Their first offensive possession, it was a sack on the first play of the game by Will Thompson. He threw an interception later to Demario Minter. But he did get them in the end zone there in the first half to cut it to 14 to 7 before Georgia was able to score again and then again here in the third quarter to make it 24 7. 10 of 16 just over 100 yards. Third and three. Three wide to the left. Quarterback draw. And Russell very hard to bring down. Now, does get the first down at the 33-yard line. And Quentin Moses tried to rip the ball out. Instead of trying to tackle Russell short of the first down, he was trying to rip the football out on this quarterback draw. Watch Quentin Moses. See, he reads draw, and then instead of trying to tackle Russell, he's going to try to strip the ball out and create a fumble. And that enabled Russell to fall forward and get the first down. First down and 10. Moses will get a rest. Charles Johnson has taken his place, number 99. And on first down, LSU has stayed primarily on the ground. They will not this time. From the backside, pressure, the pass delivered to Bo, and Tim Jennings knocks him out of bounds, but another first down gained by the Tigers. That one picked up 14. What a beautiful throw. I mean, Jamarcus Russell is a pretty quarterback. And, and what I mean by that is when he just sets his feet and sets up and throws, he can throw the ball as well as anybody in college football. Throwing from the right side to the left sideline, a deep comeback. He was under pressure from the backside, but Russell still, with that strength, able to make the strong throw to the sideline. At the LSU 47, seventh play of this drive. And again, play action. Russell, a lot of time. Flag down, this will be holding. He heaves it, he's got a man wide open. That'll be Benny Brazel for a touchdown, but don't forget the flag. Mm. 
53 yards. However, how about that throw, though? I mean, that's that's highlight film material throw, even though it's going to come back. Boy, the penalties all year for LSU have been a problem, and they are a problem tonight. Holden, offense, number 64. Penalties 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. That is the second 15-yard penalty, or uh, excessive penalty, on Rudy Nicewanger. Right in the middle of your screen, blocking on Kedrick Golston, I think. No, it's Darius Swain blocking on but what an incredible throw rolling to his right looking back to his left off balance up in the air right on target into the end zone that's unbelievable that is the eighth penalty for 71 yards for this LSU team that came in with 91 penalties for the season Russell in trouble lobs it and it goes uh, well behind the guys on the bench well, they made a nice decision to throw that one away. I mean, that, that was a play that Georgia won. They got pressure. Kedrick Golston was in there, and he tried to throw it away and was hit right as he did it. That's why that ball kind of took off like a punt on him. Jamarcus Russell said he uh, decided ultimately between Louisiana State and Florida State. The LSU program contacted him when he was a sophomore in high school. Also uh, told us he had basketball opportunities at Alabama and North Carolina. Second down and 20. Steps up, heaves it in the middle. Bow is wide open. He overthrew it. Third and 20. Right now, Georgia's defense, they're, they're not blitzing. They're playing with two safeties. They're anticipating pass because they don't feel like LSU's running game has been a real threat. And they're just pinning their ears back and going after Jamarcus Russell. Willie, Willie Martinez. Got a nice job. Took over for Brian Van Gorder this year. And in some statistical categories, his defense has been even better. Anemic rushing effect. We won't see one here, I would imagine. Here's Russell back. Stunts by the defensive line. Russell's in trouble. They got him. He's down at the 22. That is the third sack, and every one of the three has been in double digits. Yeah. Well, Jeff Owens is the guy who's going to get the sack. A freshman out of Sunrise, Florida. As Jamarcus Russell is still down on the turf after that sack. Backup quarterback is Matt Flynn. But because of Quentin Moses and the attention that he attracts getting double blocked, that frees up everybody else to rush one on one. And Jeff Owens comes free on the other side and gets the sack. Jamarcus Russell injured on the play. The third sack posted by Georgia time has been called. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship Game presented by Dr. Pepper is sponsored by Diet Cherry Vanilla Dr. Pepper, The Home Depot, The Hartford Mutual Funds, and by Budweiser. We welcome you back to the Georgia Dome. Jamarcus Russell injured will be walking into the locker room. And let's go down to Tracy. Guys, trainers just told me that Jamarcus Russell has a separated shoulder. They're taking him to the locker room right now. He is out, out as of now. Doesn't look like he'll be coming back. But Matt Flynn, they have a lot of confidence in him. He'll be taking his place. On fourth down, here's Jackson with the punt. Nail this one. Thomas Flowers, fair catch. Ooh, dangerous uh, way to catch the ball. 49-yard punt, nothing on the return. Tough, tough night for Jamarcus Russell. Sacked three times. Matt Flynn, a sophomore from Tyler, Texas, has seen action in five games previously this season. He'll be the quarterback when LSU gets the ball back. But first, they must rely on their defensive 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 24 
seven Georgia at stake here, an automatic spot in a BCS game. It would be the Sugar Bowl, which will be played here in the Georgia Dome because of the effects of Hurricane Katrina. First down and 10. And the handoff goes to uh, Craig Lumpkin, number six. Well, you just saw that play selection difference. That's the 27th run that Georgia has called against only nine passes. And they've got the three backs. Lumpkins carried it eight times, Thomas Brown nine times, Danny Ware five times, and then DJ Shockley has carried it a few times himself. There's Neil Calloway, offensive line coach and offensive coordinator. Mark Rick calls the plays, but Neil Calloway very involved in the game planning. Second down and seven. Massaqua starts in motion. Shockley rolling out to his right. Nobody open. And he's dropped at the 31-yard line. Well, it has been the day of uh, <laughs> what how, you pick a burger, an adverb, adjective. Well, the two best teams uh, that everybody thought were the two best teams did their took care of their business today. Both recorded huge wins and no controversy on who plays for the national championship this year. I think it's the first time ever since the BCS started that the two teams that started the year one and two finished the year one and two. Third and six. Blitz. Pass inside. Should be a first down, Georgia. Massaqua. I mentioned the fact that uh, a Sugar Bowl berth is at stake for the winner of this game. Uh, most of the bowl projections would have the loser of this game playing in the Peach Bowl, which ironically enough is scheduled for this building. So uh, in either case, these two teams are probably going to be making return trips to Atlanta on first down. Craig Lumpkin. Well, the SEC had seven bowl spots available, but only six bowl eligible teams this year. You must win six to be bowl eligible. And the projection, Todd, either Georgia or LSU in the Sugar. Capital One, probably Auburn. Peach, the loser of this game. Alabama seems destined for the Cotton Bowl. Florida now, we are told, probably going to the Outback, which would leave South Carolina going to Shreveport and the Independence Bowl. It's the Tim Brando Bowl, right? <laughs> in his hometown. <laughs> Brando Bowl. Yeah, the Brando Bowl. There's a fly in the ointment of the Brando Bowl, apparently. Here's Shockley from behind. Here's Pope, the big tight end. First grab of the day, and it comes in the middle of three white shirts. Well, because of the body type of Leonard Pope as he runs the corner route, he's able to just shield a smaller safety away from him to get the football. Here comes Stealth's the safety, but he can't get around Leonard's big body to make a play. And this guy right here, Max Gene Gillis, number 74, has played a whale of a ball game. There he is, one-on-one -on -one blocking against Claude Roten and taking care of business right at the line of scrimmage. He's the best offensive lineman up there for Georgia, and he's played a nice ball game tonight. First down and 10 after that last 16-yard game. Lumpkin to the 40. And the clock rolls on. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Louisiana State, first game, moved out to Arizona State. They won with two block kicks in that one and won it on a fourth down pass. Then lost on a postponed game against Tennessee in overtime. They've unraveled nine consecutive wins since then, but uh, a formidable uphill task for the remainder of this one. And their quarterback, Jamarcus Russell, in the locker room. Second down and five. Lumpkin again. Goes right. First what, down. What a nice job of following the block of Dennis Rowland his tackle. He just showed patience and he waited for Roland to secure his block and then cut up inside. At the top of your screen, number 66, Roland is blocking on the outside. And once he saw him get him turned, then Lumpkin cut inside for a nice game. 
And if you're not patient as a running back, you end up probably stringing that out and getting tackled for a loss of yardage. First down, less than a minute to go, third quarter. And here's the triumvirate. And they're all fresh. Yes. I mean, that's, that's the key with those three guys is you always got somebody that's fresh and wants the ball. Georgia calls timeout. And DJ Shockley will head over to chat with Mark Rick. 51 seconds to go. Matt Flynn awaits his chance. Back in Atlantic, let's go down to Tracy for an SEC moment presented by Sonic. Earn in the 2003 SEC Championship game, LSU jumped out to a 17-point halftime lead, highlighted by Justin Vincent's 87-yard touchdown run and Michael Clayton's 43-yard touchdown reception. The Tigers were never threatened as they went on to win 34-13, their second SEC title in three seasons. And guys, we spoke to some Georgia players yesterday, and that loss was still fresh in their minds. Right now, they're getting their revenge. And among those with whom we spoke was uh, Quentin Moses, who's resting right now because this Georgia offense is moving methodically yeah. downfield. And the amazing thing is they are running the football, 101 yards rushing, but the longest running play, only 12 yards. But this is the fifth best rush defense in all of college football in LSU. And they can't stop the Bulldogs tonight. First down and 10. 51 seconds to go in the third. Shockley will throw. Goes for Massaqua, and Massaqua dives forward, incomplete in the end zone. Good coverage from Ronnie yeah. Plew, number eight. Yeah, he's their best cover corner guy. He's a senior. First year playing out on the edge. I mean, he's been in a nickel back situation the last couple years, but he's gotten better each game and in perfect position there. Turns back, finds the football. Excellent coverage. You know, LSU lost their two starting corners last year. Both went to the league. Georgia lost their two veteran receivers last year. Both went to the NFL. And so it's young receivers for Georgia and young defensive backs for LSU. Greg Lumpkin gets the handoff. And he uh, almost got loose around the left side. Third down and seven. Well, Jamarcus Russell injured on the previous LSU possession. Sacked for the third time. Quentin Moses on top of him. And in the locker room, uh, word we get from Tracy is a separated shoulder. And that's uh, where the attention is being focused, his left shoulder. Well, he's a big, strong guy, but we're going to see Matt Flynn. And seeing a backup quarterback in an SEC championship game for LSU is not unprecedented. In 2001, it was Matt Mock coming in for an injured Rohan Davey and leading the Tigers to an upset victory over Tennessee. Les Miles giving a little instruction to Matt Flynn. That's the end of the third with the score 24 to 7. We'll return to the Georgia Dome right after this word from your local station. Jay Shockley for Georgia, Jamarcus Russell for LSU. Shockley still on the field. Russell in the locker room, separated shoulder. Said at the beginning of the program three hours ago, it might be a matter of which quarterback could prevail. Shockley has been that man so far. We begin the fourth. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wolfson, Georgia in command, leading 24-7, and they face a third and nine. Third and one to six. They converted 70%. Not so good on longer. Blitz. Shockley still up down the sidelines that will be short of the first down it'll set up a fourth down for this Georgia team and Todd we talked also about special teams I think you go back to that blocked punt still the key game of the uh, play of the game I think so I mean you know because it, it, it turned the game it, it gave Georgia more momentum I mean those special teams plays particularly in the punt game a punt block or a big punt return can really switch momentum and obviously they switch field position and I think field position because of special teams and defense has been the big key also for Georgia tonight. Well they're looking at a fourth down here and Brandon Katu is on to try a 50 yarder. He's hit two from 58 and 56 this year. 
That's got plenty of distance. My gosh. Oh! 51 officially. Well, I, you know, I saw him before the game, and he was bombing it. And Mark Rick said, wow, he's kicking. I mean, kickers love domes. Quarterbacks like domes. Kickers love dome stadiums. No wind, no water, no air currents. Just bomb it. No excuses. Mm. 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 And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. DJ Shockley opened the scoring by finding Sean Bailey deep down the left side. A 45-yard touchdown catch, 7-0 Bulldogs. It was Shockley to Bailey again, 29 yards, and a 14-0 lead. Jamarcus Russell had a one-yard touchdown lunge. The only score thus far for LSU, 14-7 at that point. And then DJ Shockley, a seven-yard run to make it 21-7. That was the halftime score. Brandon Katu showed he could do it from in close, 22 yards. Then he showed he could do it from long range. Out of Lee Jackson's hold, it was good from 51. It could have been good from 61. And it's 27 to 7. The 9 and 2 Georgia Bulldogs lead the 10 and 1 Tigers of LSU. That ties the longest field goal in SEC championship history. Alex Walls and Billy Bennett, Georgia. Two with a kickoff. I sound like I'm sneezing when I say that. <laughs> Here comes Skyler Green out of bounds up at the 24 yard line. Now, late flag. Gonna again affect field position. When you're going against a great defense, and both of these teams have been great defenses all year, and you have to go against the long field for most of the night, it's gonna be a long night. Blocking the back, number 37 on the return team. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, first down. This is the fourth straight LSU drive that is starting inside the 20-yard line. And the sophomore Matt Flynn, 6'2", 230-pounder out of Tyler, Texas, threw three touchdown passes in the fourth quarter against North Texas. A perfect day. He was seven of seven in that game. That by far his most extent, uh, extensive playing experience this year. But he is a very talented guy now. He is no slouch. And Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, has great confidence in Matt Flynn's ability. He'll throw. Try to throw on first down. Being chased by Gerald Anderson. Let's it fly. And it's... Uh, Wisely thrown out of bounds. Matt Flynn, his redshirt sophomore year last year, threw 10 passes, completed four. This year, 11 of 15. He has seen action in five games, always in a mop-up uh, role behind Jamarcus Russell. But when he came into Baton Rouge, there was some doubt as to whether or not he would be the starting quarterback or Jamarcus Russell. I mean, and he was a very confident young guy, knew he was going to be in a competitive situation. And uh, he's getting his opportunity right now. Not the greatest circumstances but an opportunity nonetheless second and ten here's Flynn right side oh, and picked off Tim Jennings touchdown Georgia sweet He was the last man signed to a scholarship at Georgia because of his height. He's from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Tim Jennings. You can measure his height. Sometimes you can't measure the heart. Well, he made the game-saving interception last week with Georgia Tech on the 11-yard line and did exactly the same thing. Read the quarterback, jumped the route, stepped in front of the throw, and made the interception. Speaking of routes, it's 34 to 7.
15 yards on the return. Tim Jennings, another big turnover for the Georgia defense. This one getting out of reach. CBS Sports coverage of the SEC Championship Game, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Red Lobster. Wrangler. And by a diamond is forever. Georgia running away with it now, 34 to 7. 14 18 to go. Tonight on CBS, stay tuned for the Academy of Country Music. 40th anniversary celebration. That is tonight, following our game on CBS. Jamarcus Russell back on the field, separated left shoulder. Matt Flynn, first interception he's thrown this year. Yeah, and that's a that's a tough throw. He was on the left hash, throwing it to the right sideline. It's only a 10-yard out route, but because of that hash to the sideline, it ends up being in the air about 40 yards. Katu. We go back to the interception by Jennings and when it's zone defense, and here's Jennings right here, when it's zone defense, you don't have to look at the receiver. You can look into the quarterback and read him, and that's exactly what Tim Jennings did. All through his drop, he's reading the route, and then he jumps. He anticipates the route, he takes a risk, and he makes the interception. Identical to the play he made last week at the end of the Georgia Tech game, only this time, he got a touchdown out of it. 5'8", 180 pounds. He's back on the field, and Matt Flynn is as well. 34-7 with 14-18 to go. Here's the toss. Vincent coming left. And uh, down at the 24-yard line. You know, one of the most ironic things about the Georgia Bulldogs in this season, I mean, the one critical loss when D.J. Shockley was hurt, was down in Jacksonville to the hated Florida Gators. And a lot of people say, well, if, you know, if Shockley would have been healthy, we, we might have won that game, probably would have won that game. What the amazing thing is the most hated of all the Gators is the guy they got to thank for them being here tonight. Because That's if right. Steve Spurrier wouldn't have beaten Florida, Georgia would not be playing in the championship game. Here's Skylar Green out of the backfield again, reversing field, coming to the near side. Matt Flynn trying to provide a block. That was a modest effort by Flynn, but he did uh, make contact. And a 17-yard gain for Skylar Green. That is a first down. Demario Mitter. He's played well. This defense has played outstanding for Georgia tonight. They've been physical. They've gotten pressure on the quarterback. They've made interceptions. They've stuffed the run completely. LSU has had no running game at all. Thirty four seven. Here's Flynn. Oh Danny Verdun Wheeler almost got his hands on that and the pass is high because of his presence. Mark Rick was a backup quarterback at the University of Miami to Jim Kelly longtime offensive coordinator under Bobby Bowden at Florida State under Ray Goff and Jim Don and they ran they won 62 percent of their games but look at the record under Rick. Unbelievable, and, and he started right away. When he came in, and his first hire was Dave Van Hallinger, his strength and conditioning coach, who started the off-season program. And they started making this Georgia team tougher from day one. And now they have completely changed the expectation level here. Well, they have a, a conditioning program called the Matt Drills. Yeah. And we've been around this uh, Georgia program enough to know that the players do not look forward to the mat drills. They, uh, yesterday in the, in the warm-up, the walk-through here, they're all wearing T-shirts that say, finish the drill. Well, what that means, just to go back to the mat drill, is they would do everything in groups. And if one person in the group didn't finish the drill, then the whole group had to repeat the drill. And these were grueling exercises early in the morning in December and January and February. And uh, it really tested the metal 
of this Georgia football team. Third down and ten. Here's Flynn out of the gun. Sets up. Caught and dropped. Will Thompson's second sack tonight. And the fourth of the night for the Georgia Bulldogs. Again, no threat of the run. You can play a lot of zone coverage and drop your safeties deep. Don't give up the big play and let those four guys up front just pin their ears back and go. Will Thompson working on Brian Johnson on the right side and just fought his way through. You know, Dave Van Hallinger, we talked about, he's getting surgery next week. He got in a collision in the Arkansas game, couldn't get out of the way, got run over and tore his rotator cuff, and he's got to get surgery next week. Got to finish the drill. Yeah. Punt is high for Jackson. Thomas Flowers, fair catch. Takes it at the 30-yard line, a 37-yard punt. Nothing on the return. And the Georgia Bulldogs with a 27-point lead. 12 minutes and 28 seconds to go. Be right back. Let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Rushing defense, Georgia has held LSU to 36 yards tonight. Mm. Matt Flynn, Chiron Carey, 9.37 to go. Jamarcus Russell, if you join us late, injured, separated shoulder, third quarter. And so the uh, sophomore from Tyler, Texas, his third series. Here's the handoff to Carey coming left. Got some room out of bounds. Chased there by Jarvis Jackson. Well, we talked about uh, the travails of LSU and the Georgia Bulldog program lost their quarterback, DJ Shockley, in the Arkansas game. Went down. Joe Tarashinsky was the starter when they faced Florida. Florida won at 14 to 10. Then they came back, and uh, from all accounts, one of the most memorable games in recent years yeah. in the SEC as. Uh, the Auburn Tigers defeated Georgia 31 to 30. Those are the two defeats they've suffered this year. And here's Carey, left side. And every year it seems Mark Rick tries to do something a little different for his team. Remember they went diving one year. Well, this year it was the Georgia Equestrian Complex. Now this. <laughs> <laughs> that is a man who's not used to being around a horse. <laughs> or at least that end of a horse. <laughs> oh, but finally, you know, if you get brushed by the tail, you got to get back on in a hurry. Yeah, and this horse right here is wondering how he got that draw. You know, in, in the rodeo, it's the cowboy who does the draw, and you worry about which horse you get. In that case, when he drew Gerald Anderson, who's at about 325, the horse is the one that was questioning the selection process. Here's a quarterback keeper, Matt Flynn. Nice run. And uh, they're moving it in chunks now, but it's going to be too little too late. 15 yards on that play. Well, that looked a lot like Matt Mock. <laughs> he ran dip. a lot of quarterback draws and quarterback traps in that 2001 game. And Matt Flynn shows some athleticism there. Jamarcus Russell separated left shoulder. That happened in the third quarter on a, a play in which he was sacked for the third time tonight. First down and ten. Here's Flynn. Quick flip right side. That's uh, Skyler Green, number five. 8-19 to go in this one. BCS berth awaits the winner. Apparently it's going to be Georgia. 13th team in the country. They will go to 10-2. and two. Looking over some notes that we made much earlier in the season before Mark Rick's team faced Tennessee. He said, you know, we have a chance to be really special this year. And uh, I don't think they counted on the two losses. No. You never know, but they are something special. This is a pretty good team. You're not kidding. And, and most people didn't expect them to be here. Now, this is a rebuilding year for Georgia, according to the, the pundits who picked them third in the preseason polls in the East. Here's Flynn. And another first down. I think one of the differences for Georgia, even though they lost some big time players, guys like David Pollock and Odell Thurman and David Green, Reggie Brown, uh, Fred Gibson, the thing is, they only had six scholarship seniors on their team last year. This year's team has 17 scholarship seniors, and so they have great leadership 
And even though some of the guys that had to step in, nobody really knew who they were. They've been in the program, and they've been leaders. And I think that's why this team was special. And then DJ Shockley, you put in him and the respect that all his teammates had for him, it made for a special year. On first and 10, 7.13 to go. Flynn back, flips it out. Chiron Carey got some room to the 19-yard line. Another first down. That's a gain of 12. So the statistical picture is going to look a little brighter for yeah. LSU. Well, this group of seniors on this team, 19 of them, suited up tonight with a victory tonight will become the most successful four-year team. Well, they tied the uh, 1983 senior class right now, 43 and 8. With a victory, they would assume first place all by themselves. First down and 10. Minter on the blitz. Minter got there. And Flynn still manages to throw it away, but over the head of Hester. DeMario Mitter draped all over the legs of Matt Flynn. There's been a couple corner blitzes tonight, called nicely by Willie Martinez. This is tough because he's coming to the backside of the quarterback, and he runs right through the block of Joseph Adai. I mean, he's coming with a full head of steam, ran right over the block and into the back of Matt Flynn. That corner blitz comes into your face where a right-handed quarterback can see it, it's a little easier to deal with than if it's coming to your backside. Second and ten. Clock shows 631 to go. Vincent going right. Stopped at the 18. I mentioned Georgia. BCS birth to the winner of this game. If Georgia goes on to win, as it appears they will, be back here to play in the Sugar Bowl against the Big East champion, West Virginia, who is 9-1, playing South Florida tonight, even though they've already won the conference. And a team that will be very similar to Georgia as they prepare for West Virginia. West Virginia, a pretty good football team. A lot of one back and shotgun, a quarterback who can run as well as throw. Exciting offense that Rich Rodriguez has up in Morgantown. Third and ten. Flynn into the end zone. Man is open. Bo touchdown LSU. Nice job by Matt Flynn. Coming back from the interception. Hanging in there. Under pressure on that throw and staying right in the pocket. And making a pretty throw to Dwayne Bow in the back of the end zone. You mentioned the irony of Steve Spurrier, the South Carolina team. Enabling Georgia to get here 34 to 13. That was the score by which LSU won the championship in 2003. Now it's a little different. <laughs> but for the moment, Matt Flynn, Dwayne Bow. Touchdown from 19 yards out. Now let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler five star premium denim jeans second quarter. Here's the call from venerable Larry Munson of Georgia. So we load up the middle and we decide where you might take a shot at him. We're coming off the corner but they pick up Boom! and they block it. It's on the 23 LSU is going to pick it up. They're going to tackle him on about the 14 yard line. Somebody shot up in there. He is in his mid 80s and I hope he works for another 10 years. Larry Munson. What a legend. Had there's a chance to somebody. say hello at halftime. Yeah there's the somebody right there. <laughs> oh dear. Onside kick coming from Chris Jackson and LSU. Hands team on the field for Georgia. Leonard Pope right on the 50. Jackson takes a nice bounce. Contact. Got it yeah. LSU. Skyler Green, last man in the jump. Well, I don't know who tried to recover it first. I think it might have been Thomas Brown. I, I don't know, but somebody tried to recover it first for Georgia, and it bounced up there. Then Leonard Pope tried to catch it, 
And Skylar Green came down with it. When you kick an onside kick, you want this thing to take a big bounce. Let your guys get down. And who tried to catch it first? It was Thomas Brown and then Leonard Pope. And Skylar Green secured the football. Les Miles encouraging his troops. They've got the ball. Trailing by 20 with 5.31 to go. Coming next, the 40th anniversary celebration, the Academy of Country Music. At, at the completion of our ball game, on first down, here's Flynn back. Goes right, pulls up. Two men deep. That one through the hands of Benny Brazell, number 17. Benny Brazell, if he doesn't do that, the, the other number 17 catches the ball because Greg Blue was just standing there waiting for an interception. And Benny Brazell is going to cut in front of him and get a hand on the football. Otherwise, that's another interception for Georgia. Here's a, here's a bit of irony in SEC championship history. 13 SEC championship games before tonight. The highest ranked team has won 10 of those 13. And that's going to change tonight. And the last exception prior to tonight was when LSU, number 21, beat number two, Tennessee, back in 2001. Second down and 10. Flynn fires it out. Vincent bobbles the ball. Greg Blue's presence might have affected his ability to catch it. And it'll be third and 10. There's Greg Blue. But I do think it's it's fairly safe to say there's been a bit of a changing of the guard in the SEC. I mean, these two teams here tonight, the last five SEC championship games, these have been the two winners. And uh, prior to that, the first nine of them, it was Alabama won five of them, Florida won seven. But these two teams, Georgia and LSU, they are uh, they're the teams to beat right now. Just Auburn won it last year with a perfect undefeated season. Third and ten. Here's Flynn. Batted down. Hit by Charles Johnson. Number 99. And it will be fourth down and ten. Well, again, the, the coverage guys, the safeties are going deep. The linemen are rushing the quarterback. And Charles Johnson, who kind of rotates in there on pass situations, did a nice job getting his hands in the, in the throwing lane. Well, down by 20 with 5.05 to go. LSU will go for it on fourth and 10. They are, by the way, perfect seven of seven on fourth downs so far this year. They need to make it eight of eight to sustain any hope. Blitz from the corner. They're now seven of eight. Tim Jennings helped lead the charge. Well, and the Bulldogs of Georgia are going to win this and go 10 and 2. Georgia has not blitzed a whole lot tonight, but it just seems like every time they have, it's been a big play. Here's Jennings over the slot, and they've timed their blitzes so well tonight. Just like they timed the block punt. Everything is coming full speed. There's no hesitation, and that's why they've been successful. Well-timed blitzes tonight for the Georgia defense. D.J. Shockley stays in at quarterback. Thomas Brown gets the handoff. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete, D.J. Shockley, a 3.1 grade point average. Taking one class, he'll graduate this month with a major in speech communications, and he's made the dean list in four of the last five semesters. His mom and dad, Donald Eugene Shockley and Tanya Shockley, in the stands with the rest of the family, his brothers Xavier and Nicholas, his sister Nicole. They met at Texas at Florida A&M. His dad, Don, a high school coach. There they are. There's the Shockley family. How proud they must be! And you can see Tanya Shockley's going to capture the moment. Here goes Thomas Brown to the ten. 18-yard game. Oh, again, it's it's late in the ball game, but because there's three Georgia tailbacks, it's a fresh one in. The linemen might be tired, the defense might be tired, but the Georgia tailbacks aren't tired. 
And they keep churning out the yardage. Thomas Brown, Danny Ware, Greg Lumpkin. It's like when they played Tennessee in a big win in Knoxville earlier in the year, 198 yards rushing against a Tennessee defense that coming into the game was fourth in the nation in rush defense. Very similar tonight. They have run this football right at LSU and run it successfully. On first down, Brown up the middle to the five-yard line. You know, last summer, Nancy and I were in Moscow on a vacation trip, Russia. We're standing on Sparrow Hill, and they sell these matryoshka dolls. They're called nesting dolls. It's a large doll. Inside is a smaller doll, then a smaller doll, okay. and a smaller doll. Okay. Sure. The University of Georgia was represented with one of these things, and on the, the biggest doll was David Green. I negotiated, bought one for 10 rubles. I've got it at home. I took off David Green. There was Fred Gibson. Took that doll off, there was Reggie Brown. Took that off, there was Odell Thurman. Took that off, there was uh, Thomas uh, Davis. And the last guy among the nesting dolls, think about this, Craig Lumpkin. <laughs> now, David Pollock was not yeah. on the doll, which leads me to deduce that Craig Lumpkin is a much more popular athlete in Russia than David Pollock. There is an injured player at the time. Now he is uh, Max Gene Gillis has had a, an outstanding game tonight. Plays the guard position in Georgia. They're a little different. They don't play left guard right guard. They flip their offensive line to the tight end side or to the open side and Max Gene Gillis a very powerful presence in there at 6'4", 340 pounds and has played an outstanding ball game tonight against those two outstanding defensive tackles of LSU. I would say Max's night is over, though. Mentioned one of the married players, his wife Maggie Joseph, a basketball player in Tampa. We asked about his uh, ability in horseback riding. Mark Rick said he uh, asked for permission to go home, avoid the horse. So he was not part of the, the Gerald Anderson adventure. Second down. A.J. Bryant is on the field now. Here's Brown. A lot of pride out there right now for LSU. Trying to, to not allow another score. You got all your starter defensive players still in the ball game. Trying to keep Georgia out of the end zone. This has been a physically impressive game for Georgia tonight. They have run right at LSU. They kind of pecked away early. They had a couple big time play action passes, but they have run the ball successfully. And probably in a game that I doubt Bo Pelini thought that Georgia would be able to run this effectively. 136 yards tonight. Third and five. D'Amico Goodman is wide to the left side, number 85. And they'll keep it on the ground. Brown. That'll bring up fourth down. I'm just guessing that they will uh, either run a uh, a modest fourth down play or yeah. take a knee, one or the other. Now, yeah. hard to uh, hard to overstate what Mark Richt has meant to the University of Georgia and what he's done in his tenure there. Outstanding. They have uh, Tennessee down a little bit this year and Florida rebuilding under Urban Meyer a little bit. I think Florida will be good next year. I think Tennessee will be back. But Georgia, even though they've got some quarterback issues next year, uh, they still are going to be uh, the team to beat, I would say, in the, in the East. 45 seconds to go. Greg Lumpkin. And the ball will go over on downs. And our Home Depot player of the game, Donald Eugene Shockley Jr., 6 of 12, 112 yards, effective. Two touchdowns in the air, one on the ground.
And he is an example of everything that is good about yeah. college athletics. You know, I, I think of him and his story and his patience. And, and it's such a similar story to, I, I know you think this is a homer, but Penn State's season this year and their quarterback, Michael Robinson, a fifth year senior who waited his turn to be the starter. Same kind of deal. They both have been great leaders and enjoyed tremendous success in their final season. Could be the final play of the game. Justin Vincent around the right side. Two thousand and five SEC champions. DJ Shockley and the Georgia Bulldogs. Bound for a BCS game the Sugar Bowl which will be played in Atlanta. Thirty four fourteen the final. Coming next, the 40th anniversary celebration of the Academy of Country Music. For Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wolfson, Ivor Lundquist saying good night from the Georgia Dome where the Bulldogs have prevailed. <laughs>